Hey guys, and welcome to episode 34 of FTB University, where I've done a bit of bee grinding off camera. I've done a lot of bee grinding off camera. There's a lot of AFKing, uh, waiting for time in a bottle to build up, and then using it. So, what I've been doing is we have bees in here. This is just breeding a bunch of common drones. To be fair, I've probably got enough. I probably don't need to be making any more common drones. Because as long as you've got enough of these, like if you get an apiary and set up this loop, and you grab anything, like you grab this one, and we come over to, I've got an empty one somewhere. If I was to put this princess in here, and this drone in here, and just keep looping it, then, you know, probably after like four, five or six rounds, you're going to have a purebred common drone. And it works for, as far as I know, any drone. You know, uh, even like the, the nether ones. Like if I start a loop up now, I'd, I'd have to do it over by the, the hot bit. But I could turn any bee into that type of bee. As long as it can survive in whatever environment that bee needs. But yeah, so we got a bunch of common drones. And yeah, these are all the same because they stack. Now, uh, we've got majestic bees. These were well, cultivated in something, I think. Uh, cultivated in common, I think, had a chance of being, giving you majestic, and they also had a chance of giving you noble. We check that. Yeah, so common and cultivated make noble. And cultivate, oh, cultivated and noble make majestic. Easy. Uh, Valiant B, I just decided to get some of them going, so now we got some sugar and we get cocoa as well. Yeah, so these are some of my breeding ones. Now, Imperial and Industrious Bees. I forget which one's which. Oh, we, haven't, we haven't looked at those ones yet, but Imperial Bees, and you can see I'm trying to do the looping thing here. I've got this random Mystical Queen, and I'm just going to loop through a bunch of Imperial Drones, and I'll end up with a Imperial Queen. Pristine, so it will never die. Um, just have a quick nap. So yeah, we got a bunch of Imperial Bees, and I'm pretty sure these ones, these were Noble and Majestic. Yeah, you had a chance of getting the Imperial Drone. Now, Industrious came from... You can see I've got, a, I've got a bunch of them, and I'll tell you one in a minute, but Industrious came from Diligent, which is just a chance between Common and Cultivated, and Unwary, which was Diligent and Cultivated, so it's a similar kind of pattern. Um, nothing particularly special about these bees in terms of what they give you. Now, pollen clusters come from industrious bees. Yeah, the, the reason I'm making these guys, because this isn't the sinister bees, this isn't for making lava, like my original intent was. But industrious and imperial make uh, royal jelly and this these pollen clusters. And you can use these. And a carpenter it takes royal jelly and pollen clusters to make scented paneling. Like, okay, what's that used for? That's what's used for making the big bee house apiary thing, the alvary. And you need like a three by three by three of these. They're actually kind of expensive. Like, you need a lot of royal jelly and pollen cluster and honey as well, which, to be fair, I haven't been collecting. Um, oh, but you can just use a squeezer with honey drops. So. That's okay, we'll build we'll build that up over time. And because the Alvarez let you produce a lot more stuff, and they also unlock G industry, which oof, makes bee breeding so much easier. In terms of how long all of this took me for getting these bees, I don't know, <laughs> three, four hours maybe? I was sort of AFKing some of it, uh, a lot of time in a bottle, a lot of like just leaving it going and going and doing other stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty time consuming. It, takes a while but we have over here sinister drones and yep they they damage you um, but we're building up these simmering combs and if you remember from last episode my plan is to use these uh, the centrifuge to get this phosphor and this phosphor can be combined with cobblestone or dirt as well uh, can be combined with cobblestone anyway to make some lava, which we're going to use for our geothermal generators. Yep, and it's a very roundabout way to 
make lava. A far more efficient way would probably be using blaze rods. Because you can use these in a squeezer. Uh, mechanical squeezer. Or well, blaze powder you can use in a squeezer to get lava. And if you remember, we can get blaze rods from our loot fabricator, which if you automate clay, which somebody mentioned in the comments of one of our earlier videos, there's, there's ways of automating clay. Um, this would probably be a good way to do it. In fact, we could make a smoldering one. I mean, yeah, once we get Gendistry, that's when we might look at uh, some of these more complex ones. But hey, we got this stuff. So, we need a squeezer. Because we're getting, we're getting phosphor. Well, no, we're, we'll make a, I'll make another centrifuge, actually. To be fair, I might end up wanting a couple of these. What do we got? Not everything. Oh dear. So, a couple of these guys. So we wanted a squeezer. And a centrifuge. Now we might need a couple of these. I'm not sure what the production rates are going to be like. I'm also probably going to want... I don't know if we need filters. We'll find out. Let's get a centrifuge and a squeezer. Going to need a way of transporting liquids. Now, did industrial craft have a pipe? Does tiny steel pipes, steel item casings. Now, I'm going to assume it's more efficient to do it this way, definitely. So we got some steel. I would set up the auto crafting, but um, I'm actually out of patterns. Um, I've used all the molecular assembly ones. Taught these things, I can now make geothermal generators. Gee, we don't have the stuff for adding anything. I don't suppose we can craft any of that, right? Like another Emmy interface? Ah, we can. About two of them. Go on then. Now, the problem we're going to run into here is with all four of these using the same molecular assembler, sometimes we're going to be waiting on it. But, I mean, yeah. It's going to be fine for what we're doing. We're not doing hugely complex crafts just yet. Oof. And it's just going to mean things will be a bit slower. Ah, oh, they're going into that machine. That's... That's a pain. Um, yeah. You just sit in there for now. Okay, so this should be enough to make a couple of pipes anyway. Cool. Make connections with a wrench. Okay, we've got a wrench somewhere. So that should be fine. Okay. Now, where am I going to want to set this up? I'm actually going to do it on the roof. Because we're going to have to deal with these bees that do a little bit of damage. So... Use this as our. This is going to be like a beehive. It's going to live there. Now, I can probably do the thing with chests. We can be collecting the combs. That's going to want to go into the centrifuge. It's probably about there. So, combs are going to come in. Uh, we want item because this is going to output the phosphor and stuff. So we're going to want the stuff that isn't phosphor to go into another chest. We want phosphor and we'll get cobblestone in this guy somehow. Yeah, I need to work out how to get the right ratio of stuff. Um, because I'm pretty sure uh, we end up with more cobblestone then stuff and I don't think we can set like I think we're going to end up like with oh, I can't even put it in there but like cobblestone and all of these things in every single slot um, which will be a problem which will be a problem so phosphor and cobblestone are going to go on this guy and lava is going to come out 
And I guess we're probably going to have something like this. Pipes are a bit funny. Ah, oh, see. And so we'll have our geothermal generators here. Uh, maybe this would be better on the ground. We just need to be away from where the bees are going to be. All right, uh, took a bit of figuring out, but I think I think I got a plan. I think I got a plan. So just running some dangerous high voltage over here uh, for our squeezer, and we can now put in. I think it's one cobblestone and two phosphorus. Yeah. We're now making buckets of lava. Uh, none of these are running yet because, uh, yeah, these bees. These bees do too much damage. So we just need to settle these guys to always active extract. And then these guys are going to insert, and I'll have to make sure I do that chest at the front. Yeah, I've <laughs> been playing around with a couple of things trying to get this to work, and yeah. So. We're going to end up in these chests with bees and honeycomb, uh, which is fine because the centrifuge will only take things that can actually centrifuge, which is this comb. Now we're going to have to deal with this stuff, but that's all right. That's all right. So these should be set to extract always active. And we're going to need another chest there. I'm going to just grab one. And then we can extract, always active from him, and make sure we insert. All right, so combs are eventually going to come out of here and go into the sky. He's going to compress them. Now, I already had this set up, didn't I? Yeah, so this is only going to insert the phosphor into the squeezer. Now we still need to figure out a way to deal with excess cobblestone. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, I guess we'll just monitor it for now. Yeah, I can't really think of a better way. We might be able to do it with integrated dynamics and just measuring how much stuff's in here. Um, and stopping once we've got 64 cobblestone in there might be a way of doing it. Um, we'll see how we go. So. And we can always just fill this up with cobblestone, except for one slot for a bit anyway. That'll be fine. And then, okay, getting the lava out of this guy. This was a challenge. So, let's say I want to set up my power, and I don't really want it there, to be fair. Uh, we got a few of these pipes. It's a bit far away from all my other stuff. Let's check it. In the middle of the room. Yeah, that's kind of cool. We'll stick it here. Now we want to. Oh, fix all this later. We need to pipe uh, into these guys. So, best way I found of doing that is. Connect these guys, and you've got to use the wrench to connect these together, which is a little bit annoying. Like, I can't reach there, so we chuck that there, and he connects to nothing, but we can connect him like that. And we're going to run this pipe, I figure, over this way. And now, right, so this guy's got lava in him. You'd think that maybe you could connect the pipe. And um, we could connect him like that. And you're like, okay, it's just going to come out. But no, not the case. And we can't put like a fluid ejector upgrade in this guy. Which I thought, oh, that's that's a real pain. That's annoying. Um, and we don't really have access to other fluid pipes yet. Um, and it's... Just because of, I mean, uh, oh, oh, we could have made Amrace of Engineering's ones, actually. Oh, well, we I figured this out anyway. I've got a couple of quests for making the fluid pump 
and I've already claimed the one for getting the pipes, but they're pretty big, so I don't think we need them. But all right, so we get this pump. We put him like that. Now this is the side he'll pump out of, so we can rotate him that way. But then he needs power. What I was doing is, oh, it does work like that. Yeah, we're just going to power that pump off this generator. And he now has the lava that was in here inside him. But he's still not pumping it out. But with the fluid ejector upgrade, hey, look at this. We're now getting lava inside these guys, just building up the buffer, which is ideal. In fact, we got some more tin cable. We can now hook these. Um, and to be f uh, they've got to go almost up there where the solar panel stuff is. To be fair, I'm going to move this anyway. So, these are all going to get power coming out of here. Now, we probably could just do this, right? Um, I mean, that's a little bit annoying if we want to run power out this way, which we will. We can run it at the top. I mean, that's probably okay. I'm going to sleep. We can run our solar panels. I mean, to be fair, they can just sit here and here. Oh, not there. There and there. And that actually probably looks better than the way it was. Cool, and they're generating. Nice. And they are connected, ah, uh, not particularly where we want them, but that's cool. Just so I can see what's happening. So, it's power coming out, so these guys are not in the right place. At all. To be fair, we can move them. And we'll probably just use these guys as like emergency ones when we need to. And hey, that'll be fine. Now they'll all feed into that dude. To be fair, that would look a lot tidier. Uh, I guess like that. I guess like that, that's better. And then I can connect like that. Uh, but that defeats the purpose. Hmm. That'll work. Here we are putting out there. It would be nice to be able to see how much power is in them though. So I guess if we left, which to be fair doesn't look any better than it did before. We could do that. Just so I've got access to see how much power is in there. So that'll be fine for now. So these will all get lava, they'll all make power. Which then these guys can use. And we still have to tidy all of this up because this is not ideal. But we need to automate this part, and I think we're close. I think we're close. We still have to deal with this. But I think we could do that. Storage drawer. Make a void upgrade. Let's make a basic drawer. If 
If we set this guy to insert, he should get those things. He does. We'll check a void upgrade in there. We should have the key somewhere. And locked. So he's only ever going to get that stuff in there. So that's kind of cool. And this stuff should all work. So we can fill all of this in. Cool, and we need to change the range of this dude to so say one, two, three, four, five. If we do seven, we should see the particle effects. That should be more than enough. And you need to be hot. So we check some lava in you. Try 130. See if we don't have to do as much. So that'll be cool. And we can grab these bees. Now I got a modest princess here, which I'm going to convert to a sinister one. So we put you there, put you there. Uh, you're going to probably complain it's too cold and you don't have flowers. Too humid, too cold and no flowers, but that's fine. And you'll go there because the rest of these guys are going to want the nether wart stuff. And they're not going to do anything for a bit because it's still too cold and too humid. But that should be um, this pretty much automated. Uh, we can check in the centrifuge one of these guys. In fact, just to test that this works. Um, once this guy compresses that, he should end up with another one. Which he's not. Just because I never put that on insert. There we go. Then we can just chuck cobblestone in there. And you'll begin making lava. Of course we have to wait on uh, some more of these combs to happen. Could give this guy a helping hand. Just to build up a back stuff. Yeah, we're going to end up with a lot of this refractory wax, but I'm, I'm assuming we're going to use that at some point. Now you, you are going to run out of lava. And it would be cool to pipe lava into you. I don't know that we can. Certainly worth trying though. Can I connect? You like this. Yes I can. Ah. Oh. Well, to be fair, <laughs> probably want to go down. Cool. And once we sleep. And this will hopefully be somewhat self-sustaining. It looks like the solar panels keeping up. how much power this guy wants. He's filling up with lava because he's full. I'm assuming that means yeah these guys are all full of lava. We're full of power. Awesome. And hey this is kind of like a sealed ah oh, we need to do this guy yet. Like a sealed environment. Still too humid. So uh, get this guy to speed up. Too 
humid, too humid. So these bees are all going to start shortly. Yep, they're, they're away. <laughs> and now we just never want to go near this again. Because these guys hurt. Um, and I could probably chuck some stuff in there that I don't need to hang on to. Awesome. And then all that's left to do <laughs> is give the base a bit of a tidy up. Right, Dan, there's a <laughs> pretty average uh, access way. But hey, we've done it. Um, all that's left to do is figure out some way of stopping this guy from getting that full of cobblestone. Because if that happens, we're not going to get any more... Uh, oof, he's got electrocuted and possibly stung at the same time. Uh, we're not going to get any more phosphorus stuff coming into there. Which would be a pain. Actually, no. I was just going to say I was going to use that tank we've got somewhere. It's still liquid, but then we need to make another pump to mop out of it. Since uh, these IC2 machines are a little bit funny about that. But hey, we should be able to now uh, grab some of this ore. Now, why are you not... Oh, you don't pulverize that. But like, if we get this and we put it in here... Yeah, it's probably not good that these are running at the same time. Again, we're just going to use them as emergency emergency ones but if all of these machines are running he's running I mean this guy only runs sometimes it looks like we're fine because these guys aren't running all the time so hey that's pretty cool what's left to do now is sort all of this ore processing out which I think is a job for next episode well, there you go, guys. That's how you automate lava using bees. Um, possibly not the easiest way to do it, but to be fair, it wasn't too bad once we figured out the bee breeding, to be fair. But hey, yeah, so we have our lava production automated. Now it's just up to us to sort the ore processing up a bit tidier to deal with all these little dusts and like the stone dust we're getting and maybe look into getting into the thermal centrifuge. Which I think is the next tier of power. So that, that could be the job next episode. But hey, this has been Classic Duff. You've been watching this episode. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.